Welcome to Canada's second largest province, Quebec. Enter any store and you'd most certainly be greeted with... Bonjour! Hi! But why? It's pretty clear in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms that both English and French are the two official languages of Canada. But I guess Quebec doesn't see it that way. Ah yes, Quebec. The spoiled and annoying oldest child of Canada. Kind of like the estranged family member who doesn't want to stay in Canada and wants to move out while also being employed and financially supported by Daddy Justin. Oh, don't forget, they also have a degree in French language. I know it's hard to imagine, but there are actual living people who inhabit the vile province of Quebec. Shocking. Mais quand nous parlons du Québec, nous devons remarquer que toute la population de Québec ne parle pas que le français. So, it must be noted that uh, Quebec's Charter of French Language, commonly known as Bill 101, ou en français, Bill 101, uh, angered the small English population still in the country. In particular, a law in this bill said that commercial signs could only be written in French. Valerie Ford, a Quebec wool shop owner, was incensed. And what do you do when you're angry? You sue. But you don't just sue a person. You sue the whole province. Welcome to Ford vs Quebec, open bracket 1988, close bracket 2STR712. Period. You can't just sue because you feel like it. Valerie Ford felt that section 58 and 59 of Quebec's French language law infringed on her fundamental freedoms. Well, Daddy Trudeau's daddy wrote and signed a document called the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which protects all our fundamental rights. Ford argued that it violated one of her fundamental freedoms guaranteed in section B of the Charter and Rights and Freedom that Helena Gorbani will now explain. Two, everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. A, freedom of conscience and religion, and B, freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. Ton arrière, arrière grand-père, il a défriché la terre. Kian, do you think Quebec knows what discrimination is? Because Ford argued that she was discriminated on the basis of her language, which violated her equality rights, section 15, every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to the equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination. It's court time. Ford is challenging laws 58 and 69. Nice. Of the Quebec Charter of the French Language, these two laws were issued Does Section 58 and 69 of the Quebec Charter of the French Language infringe the freedom of expression guaranteed by Section 2B of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and Section 3 of the Quebec Charter of Human Rights and Freedoms? The Section 58 and 69 of the Quebec Charter of the French Language infringe on the guarantee right against discrimination based on its language is in Section 10 of the Quebec Charter of Human Rights and Freedoms. 6. Does fundamental freedoms to be applied to personally spoken languages and commercial signs? Ford and the Alliance Quebec challenge the province of Quebec to a battle. Ford uses Charter of Rights freedom of expression violation. It's super effective. Quebec uses the reasonable limits clause. It misses! Supreme Court rules unanimously 5 to 0. Quebec faints. <laughs> J'utiliserai la non-withstanding clause. <laughs> Le Québec sera indépendant bientôt. Simplement regardez. The court ruled in a unanimous 5-0 decision that Quebec's language law violated the right to free expression and it was not a minimal impairment to this right, preventing it from being saved under Section 1 as a reasonable limit under Charter Protections. And so, history was made. In its 85-page judgment on December 15, 1988, the court ruled that it was perfectly legal to display signs in both English and French in Quebec, and that preventing them 
as the Charter of French Language did, was an unconstitutional breach of the Canadians' right of freedom of expression. So, the Supreme Court recommended that the Quebec government change the bill so that bilingual outdoor signs would be allowed as long as French was predominant. But, remember, we're talking about Quebec here. And do you think they would listen? The Quebec government almost completely ignored this recommendation. Less than a week after the court rendered its decision, the Quebec legislature amended Bill 101 and Bill 178, which kept French as the only language on outdoor public signs, posters, and commercial advertising. The only exceptions were for ethnic or foreign language signs indoors that were approved by the Bureau de la Langue Française and advertisements carried in non-French media and newspapers. To bypass the Supreme Court's ruling, the Quebec government invoked the non-withstanding clause of the Canadian Charter of Rights, whilst provisioning that Bill 178 would have been revisited in five years. And so, after five years in June of 1993, well, that's very old, the Quebec government modified the Charter of the French language once more with Bill 86, finally allowing outdoor signs in both English and French, as long as French portion was predominantly displayed, which of course was exactly what the Supreme Court had recommended in the first place. This is a law that the Quebecers still live with to this day. Of course, when, you're, when we're dealing with humans, no one is ever going to be satisfied. You'll never be satisfied, satisfied, satisfied. In particular, the nationalists of Quebec were quite displeased with the fact that they were not being spoon-fed independence. Alors, ce que vous dites est que nous n'avons pas le droit de protéger notre langue et notre culture? No, what we're saying is that as long as you're not destroying other people's culture, you can sure protect yours. Mais... Je m'en fiche with non-withstanding clause activate. Additionally, the Ford vs. Quebec case had an impact on the failure of the Meech Lake Accord. With this part of Bill 101 deeming that being deemed illegal, tourists can visit Quebec and be hopefully met with signs that are legible. Then again, in practice, sometimes Quebec doesn't want to listen. The ruling of the Supreme Court shows the limitation of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, where it is often forced to choose between favoring the rights of an individual or a larger society. It favors larger society for two reasons. First, it outlines the amount of power that provinces have over their laws pertaining to language signage. Second, it outlines the amount of power and struggle between the provincial governments and the Supreme Court of Canada. Even though the Supreme Court, which is the highest court in the country, ruled that a law passed by the province of Quebec was a charter violation, the province had the power to simply ignore it by enacting the non-withstanding. It's pretty much the Ford v Quebec case summed up. Hopefully this marks the end of other provinces wanting to separate. Ha 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 ha. loin sans un faut pas que tu touches. C'est pas que je sais pas bien parler. Mais j'suis un colon anglicisé.